Everyone's been talking about this big pattern shift that's coming up that's going to throw us into a very cold December. But the timeline keeps moving. Is it before Thanksgiving? Is it after Thanksgiving? Or do we have to wait until December to see our chances for snow skyrocket? Let's dive into what the next two weeks look like across the states and talk about when that shift to a potentially significant winter pattern could occur. It's November 16th, 2025. Let's get into the weather updates. This major weather pattern shift we're expecting over the coming weeks is not just being talked about by YouTubers and people on X. The National Ocean and Atmospheric Administration see this pattern flip as well. I've shown this in my previous videos, but this is their week three to four temperature outlook. And this is their six to 10 day temperature outlook. So yes, they're projecting a major change in the way of a lot of cold and below average air moving into the states as we get to the end of November and into the beginning of December. And a part of that does have to do with what's going on in our stratosphere up to the north. As the stratosphere warms and it disrupts our polar vortex, it's going to displace cold air down to the mid latitudes. And our global models have been picking up on this already. We'll get into all that a little later in the video. Right now, I want you to take a look at our 500 millibar jet stream. It's sitting just to the north of the states right now. We have a little bit of a subtropical jet bowling ball trough that wants to eject off through the plains, but our polar jet is up to the north and that's where the coldest air is. Now, the thought is as we move forward in time and that stratospheric heating continues, our tropospheric polar vortex is going to try and collapse, pulling our polar jet to the south. Here's where our jet stream could be getting into next weekend. And here's where it could be as we exit November. Our European AI model is actually even more aggressive. You can see this polar jet really wants to sink in across the states. Again, because of all of this cold Arctic air that wants to be displaced down to the south. The timing of this is tough and that's been the argument online. Before I get into what I think the timing will be, let's take a look at our next two weeks. So here we are November 16th. We have our polar jet diving down into New England. This is bringing a lot of moisture into the region and a little bit into the mid-Atlantic as well. Also some good snow to the high elevations. We also have a storm system moving into the Southwest, bringing a lot of moisture into California, Arizona, Southwestern Utah, and Nevada currently, and piling up that snow in the Sierra Nevadas. As we move through today and into Monday and Tuesday, we're gonna continue to see this flow, this cold air flow up through New England, and that system will continue to make its way out east as we get into Tuesday and Wednesday. Not expect it to be severe, just rain showers. And I wanna back out here so you can actually see what's happening out off the West Coast. Here's our storm system that's barraging the Southwest, and we have another storm system up here and some troughing that's gonna try to dive down into the Northwest. So as we move into the middle of next week, Wednesday and Thursday, this system down to the South, again, is gonna continue to funnel in moisture to this region. And then here comes another storm system headed right towards the west coast and at this point we're pretty warm from coast to coast getting into next weekend guess what that storm system that was barraging the southwest is now ejecting off through the plains and this is likely going to bring a lot of moisture into portions of the central and southern plains the ohio valley and then eventually the midwest and northeast we may even see a severe threat with this so we're talking next thursday to saturday let's pay attention to this region and as we push towards the end of the weekend here's another system with some cold air and potentially a lot of snow for the mountains up in the northwest snow and moisture which if this plays out like this will eventually transfer down into the Rockies. And I've been talking about this. If you planned a Thanksgiving ski trip, definitely a little bit of a gamble that early in the season. But if the GFS is correct, you're going to get a lot of snowfall for the Rockies right before Thanksgiving day. Now we're pushing past 200 hours. So really anything out here is anyone's guess. The latest GFS run does see a ton of moisture for the central plains and potentially a big snowstorm as well developing. And this would be Thanksgiving day. If, and that's a big if, we were to see this play out like this, this would definitely be some blizzard conditions up here for portions of the central and northern plains and this would likely be some sort of severe outbreak here we're talking about 250 plus hours out we're probably not going to see this exact thing set up but this is where the GFS sees the flip. Notice what happens to our polar jet as we move past Thanksgiving and into the 29th and 30th. There is that collapse. Now our jet is sitting through the states and not sitting to the north moving through Canada. Now up until about 200 hours out, our European agrees with the GFS for the most part. There's obviously some differences. There's always going to be some differences. But when does the European see that pattern flip happening? Well, here's Thanksgiving. And the latest European also sees the chance for some sort of snowstorm through the plains, potentially pushing out towards the Midwest on Thanksgiving Day as well. And guess what? There's the collapse of the polar jet. This is not as drastic as it is on the GFS or even the European AI model. As I said earlier in the video, our Euro AI wants to collapse this pretty far to the south. All right, it's time to take a look at my favorite thing, our teleconnections. Let's go over the latest European weeklies. Here we have our AO. If this is positive, you may see a warm up. If this is negative, you're probably gonna see a cool down. That's the 
simple version of it. The AO is our Arctic Oscillation. And imagine this downtrend here is the AO saying, hey, your polar jet, that one that holds all that cold air, is going to be sinking down into the US. And this uptick is the opposite. It's the AO or Arctic Oscillation saying, hey, we're moving all that Arctic air back up to where it belongs to the north. Well, notice our mean and control through the first two weeks of December wants to go negative. And this is what everyone's been seeing for quite a while now. And it hasn't really changed. It's been moved forward. It's been moved back. But the signal's always been there. But it's not as easy as, oh, okay, we go negative right around November 25th. That's when it's going to get cold in the States. Not quite. Let's take a look at our EPO or East Pacific Oscillation. Now, as this moves negative, we typically get a ridge building up over Alaska. Why is that important? Well, it tells us where this cold air could be. Ridging in Alaska most of the time leads to the coldest air being displaced into the central and eastern US. And we can see the timing of this as well, which is the first week of December. Moving on to the NAO or North Atlantic Oscillation. A negative NAO can lead to cold air that sinks down into the states, kind of being stalled out because it tries to move out. But with the negative NAO, you've got blocked out to the east. So this cold air really has nowhere to go. So if you want a sustained cold pattern, you want a negative NAO. A positive NAO, it's just going to let that cold air right out. Now, our European weeklies isn't really giving us much here. It's pretty much showing a neutral negative NAO, although this has been fluctuating a lot over the last couple of weeks. Moving on to our PNA or Pacific North American oscillation. With that negative EPO setting up Alaskan ridging and this negative PNA, which would typically mean more troughing in the West, this does lead me to believe that this cold air push will likely start out West and make its way through the central US and then eventually the East as we get into early to mid-December. Originally, the thought was this cold air is going to sink into the plains and this is really going to be an eastern U.S. cold early December. But if it plays out like this, that cold air is going to transition from the west to the east. And if we have that negative NAO blocking, that cold air will stall out east and we'll have a nice cold, potentially winter storm pattern leading up into Christmas. Potentially. I can't tell the future, but I can tell you what the latest data is showing. Now, this right here is our strongest signal for a very cold cold start to December. And I am not lying. I even went as far as to make a meme on X about how negative this WPO is. It's pretty impressive. It's literally off the charts. So what does a negative WPO typically mean for our weather in the States? This is a signal for strong ridging near the Aleutians and Western Alaska. This promotes high latitude blocking, which will usually buckle the jet stream and displace tons of cold air down into the south. And this is one of the reasons I think NOAA in their three to four week outlook isn't just saying below average temperatures in the east, in the plains, or out west. They're saying average to below average temperatures potentially from coast to coast. Could it be because of how significant this negative WPO signal is? I think so. Don't worry, I will finish this for you guys. There you go. I'm an artist. And by the way, do you want to know what type of storm track this promotes? A lot of times this leads to strong low pressure systems diving through the Rockies and then re-amplifying as they move through the plains and out east. A negative WPO like this, especially as our stratospheric polar vortex isn't really having a good time and it's getting disrupted and all of that cold air is diving south, this can lead to big big major snowstorms. But once again, I have to say it, it's not guaranteed, but this is the pattern that promotes it. And this is the pattern you look for if you're a snow lover. I mean, it literally looks like we're looking at the Mariana Trench. So the big reveal, what I talked about in the beginning of the video, when is the switch? When do I think the flip's gonna happen? I think it's a day or two after Thanksgiving. I'm gonna have to agree with the Euro. And no, don't say, oh, of course he's agreeing with the Euro. Everyone always agrees with the Euro. I've taken the GFS's side a few times already in the last few months, and the GFS has actually done a pretty good job, including with our system last weekend that brought all that snow to the Ohio Valley, portions of New England. The GFS spotted that correctly before the Euro, so hey, I'd say the Euro's right 70 to 80% of the time, but you can't always throw the GFS out. But here you go on the Euro, you can see as we get really into Thanksgiving and then the 28th and 29th, that's when we start to see this collapse. Could this move up a couple days? Yeah. Could it move back a couple days? Yeah. Do I expect us to still be in a warm ridging pattern on December 1st? No. If we are in a hot and dry pattern across the states, through the first week of December, I give you guys permission to yell at me in the comments. I actually might regret that. I really appreciate you guys watching this video. If you like this type of content, subscribe, hit that notification bell. I make posts like this every single day. And typically I get on and live stream right after I post to answer all of your weather related questions. And if you wanna join a great weather community, the link to my Discord is right down in the description. You'll get daily updates in my Discord and meet a ton of other weather enthusiasts. So think about becoming a member of the Climate Crew. Again, thanks for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one or the live stream.